So I came here with a friend. He's a doctor by day, as busy as you are, but at night, ladies and gentlemen, he cracks everybody with comedy. I give you Ghana's best, Obi Amponsa. Please welcome him warmly. Hello. Hello, Ghana. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. My name is Obi Amponsa, like the MC said. I'm uh, an optometrist by day and a comedian by night. I know there's a bit of mismatch, right? Yeah. Oh, thank you. This is wonderful. Yes, I stopped introducing myself to people as an optometrist because anytime you introduce yourself to Ghanaians as a doctor, they all come up with their health problems. <laughs> Especially ladies. I tell a lady, I'm an eye doctor. They say, oh, my eye has been itching. So I'll stop. Now I meet a lady. I say, hi, my name is Obi. I'm a gynecologist. <laughs> Any gynecologist have problems? <laughs> you don't have some? Let's move on. But are you all OK? Is everybody here OK? If you're OK, please give me a round of applause if you're OK. All right. I ask this question because I'm a doctor and I'm concerned about your health. There was this time I boarded the VIP bus, and then I went to the back seat. And if you have ever picked the VIP bus in the evening, it is very cold. So I went to the back seat. There was this woman shivering. <clears throat> and I realized it was because of the air conditioning. So I said, Ma, do me. She was like, Debbie, my chiaka. <laughs> hey, <too bewu. laughs> you fell for it, so you want to die. So are you all OK? Or my chiaka? <laughs> it's such a pleasure to be here. Club 100 Awards. I think if we ever had an awards like Club 2000 Awards, there's this company that would be part. This company is the phone sellers at Circle. <laughs> those guys, Nana, those guys. <laughs> I once went there to buy a phone charger. Phone charger, simple charger. I said, I need a charger. First of all, when you get there, they ask you one question that confuses you. They ask you, open their hand. I'm like, they say, oh, we have the original and the other one. I bought the original. I came home, I plugged my phone. My phone's battery percentage was around 53, you know, Nanado's percentage, 53.4. <laughs> so I stepped out, right? I stepped out, I came back, it had dropped to my hammer, 44.4. <laughs> so I decided to stand there and watch. I kid you not, gradually my phone's percentage was approaching Parkwesi Indum. <laughs> And then finally, it got to Ayariga Zero. <laughs> what shocked me most was the message that appeared on my charger. There was a message crawling on my charger. Charger full, unplugged phone. My phone had charged the charger. <laughs> Growing up in Ghana, it's, it's, it's not easy. And I mean, any, any Kumasi people here, if you are a Kumasi indigenous, please make some noise. No. Yes, we are here. Kumasi is a wonderful city. See, anybody here, if you are here for the year of return and you haven't been to Kumasi, be there. It's a wonderful place. I boarded a car from Accra to Kumasi. I lighted at Tech Junction. I wanted to pick a car. I went to the car park. There was this man standing by his private car shouting, yes, Uber, Uber, Uber. <laughs> I was like, I, I will not have your so hard your order when you ask them. <laughs> no, Kumasi. Kumasi is the only place they, they will shorten your name and the short form of your name will be longer than your original name. <laughs> the short form for Juliet is Juli Ju. <laughs> Comfort is C. Kwane. <laughs> Douglas is Odor Girls. <laughs> Kumasi is a wonderful place. And I say it's a wonderful place because everywhere you go, you seem to have a relative somewhere. You may have a mother, an uncle at Santase. Uh, you know, your grandmother will be a genius. So, you cannot even apply certain traits there. You cannot be an armed robber in Kumasi. You barge into somebody else, hey, bring your money. The man will be like, ah. Hey, Siyama. Hey, Siyama, why can't you papa? Chem, chem, my friend, my wife, yeah? Who's my jata, crab, hey, Siyama? Hey, what about you? My name is Noyo, yeah, then. What's why I'm robo? The wife will come like, hey, you know, I can see papa. You cannot be an armed robber in Kumasi. I grew up in Kumasi. 
And growing up as a Ghanaian child, I had people who lied to me that they were first in class, especially my parents. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. If you are here and you're a parent, if you ever lied to your kids that you were first in class, just wave. They are not here. Wave. <laughs> growing up, every parent was first, right? My dad was first, my mom was first, my uncle was first, my auntie was first, and they were all in the same class. <laughs> but my uncle, my uncle is doing well for himself. Please, a round of applause for my wonderful uncle. Thank you. Yes, he's, he's an administrator now. He's an administrator on WhatsApp. <laughs> he has three groups he administers. They call, they call him Admin Mugabe, so... But my mom, my mom is the one I trust. My mom, Ghanaian mothers, you know, I became a doctor because of my mom. You know the type of Ghanaian mother who never went to the medical school? But like any disease you come up with in the house, she will cure it for you. You know the, that type, right? You know, unlike a white kid goes to the mom, mommy, mommy, I have a headache. The mom goes like, oh my God, oh my God. It could be malaria, oh my God. It could be Ebola, oh my God. Picks the phone, calls 911, ambulance comes to pick the kid to the hospital. Headache. Me, I have a headache. I go to my mom, mom, me see me. My mom be like, Uti oya. And also a warning. <laughs> come, 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 come. And amazingly, I'll go and do that and come and I'm fine. Give it up for Ghanaian mothers. Give it up. <laughs> so I actually thought being a doctor in Ghana was easy. No, it's not easy. Some patients come to the clinic and they are not concerned about their sickness anymore. They are rather concerned about the person who just left your consulting room. Ask one woman, mommy, then they want me to here. Hey, now mommy not going to be well now. You are in the team and pay one, what was saying? Serious. And when you are in the hospital as a doctor, let me tell you what happens. There are some patients you meet, you do not understand them. Especially those who work at the district assemblies and the civil servants. <laughs> Most of them have deducted like 20 years from their age. So that when pension is due, they can at least continue working, you know? So when you ask them their age, they get offended. You ask them their age, they say, oh, they're they. <laughs> Some of them tell you their age like you ask for a lot of number. Oh, Mr. I, how old are you? So, oh, doctor, uh, what they found 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. <laughs> While strike average, I'm like, what? <laughs> Others tell you their age like it's a journey. How old are you? So, see, I had it. Meninam 40. Make up 45. And maybe 50 to them, I'm 62. Some tell you their age like you ask for an iPhone or a Samsung phone. How old are you? 50 plus. <laughs> My favorites are the ones who give you options to choose from. How old are you? So, open the air. Like, oh, I see a bind the air. And oh, my uncle Sammy, the air. I bind the air 44 uncle, so it's this is for you. Lastly, before I leave, before I leave, uh, I'm Ghanaian and I'm a proud Ghanaian. I want to ask how many of you believe Jesus is coming and he's a white person? Okay, how many of you believe he's a black man? Why? You, you, nobody? I think Jesus is black. And in fact, if Jesus was Ghanaian, which tribe do you think he would belong to? Quickly, before I go. Somebody said, Ewe. <laughs> oh, by you. <laughs> Efo Jesus. <laughs> that will never happen. Efo, Efo Jesus. An Ewe man will not be that meek and humble for you to kill him and go like that. <laughs> you put the nail in Efo Jesus and you will feel it in your ribs. <laughs> but I just... An Efo... <laughs> And I'm the that one I'm the last miracle. <laughs> Which other tribe? Ashanti, no. Jesus will not be an Ashanti. I'm an Ashanti, but I know Ashanti people. We will brag. We tell you what we have and all that. In fact, Kofi Yesu will never carry his cross. <laughs> he goes to his auntie, Malizi. Malizi, John will have like number for close and I young crew will close. <laughs> Which other tribe? Hausa, 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 no. You know, other people, before Hauser Jesus goes to the cross, the whole of Nima <laughs> will come and be like, yo, 
Yes, who person who are now person who they catch it? Catch it, man. They better demonstrate who who are like. How is that? Oh, I'll die. I'll die. And he comes on the cross like with all swag, like. Hey, woman, you need killer now. Come in, tell me now who changed it. Put in here, Madina, good. Three days later, mess on the mess show was like. Mess revenge was like. I think if Jesus was Ghanaian, he would be fancy. Please give it up for fancy. See if you are fancy. Fancies are beautiful people. Fancies wonderful people. Meek and humble. Meek. So I fancy Jesus would be on the cross like, ah, warukum. Hey, baby, that's why I'm here. Oh, yeah, yeah, five inches and I'm seven. Hey, one to me, I do. And finally, I say, ah, my die. Thank you very much. My name is Obi Amponsa. It's been a pleasure entertaining you. God bless you. Thank you, President. <laughs>